Hello everyone and welcome to another repair video. Here on my workbench I have my patient for today. It's an Amiga 1200 motherboard with revision 1A and this motherboard has a kind of color problem to it. So to start with I will just uh, turn on the power and um, let you guys have a look for yourselves uh, so you can see um, what kind of picture we're getting on screen. Okay so I'm at the kickstart screen here. Now I don't know how well the camera is able to uh, pick that up but I think it's pretty obvious that the colors are not displaying correctly on screen. Um, and then um, I'll tell you what I do. I will put another video clip here. I will edit this video and I will put another video clip here to the right with a uh, kickstart screen from a working Amiga 1200. And um, I think it's pretty obvious that there, there is a difference. And the left uh, picture here, the left screen, um, the, the, the colors are really showing incorrectly. Now ob obviously there will be a flicker here on both uh, screens because um, you know I'm filming a CRT screen here so there's gonna be some flickering for you guys when you watch this video but for me there is no flickering um, so that's just the camera obviously you know. Uh, but um, the colors are displayed incorrectly on this um, screen and uh, um, there is something I will have to look into and now I'm starting uh, Pro <laughs> here you can see that the screen is really green so now I'm in Pro Tracker as you can see so I'm going to the setup screen here because here we got a, some slide bars you know red green blue and then um, I'm gonna test the different colors individually here so um, if I pull all these colors down to uh, the lowest value and here if I start with red I move it up and yeah we're getting a linear change there so um, I guess that's okay how about green yeah we're getting a linear change and uh, for blue okay so this is kinda interesting so I noticed something really odd here already now okay take a look at this I start moving the slide bar for blue so I'm moving the slide bar to the right it's getting more and more blue here and uh, then I reach a point BAM it goes down to black again so in the middle of the slide bar it goes to a kind of high intensity and just one notch more BAM it suddenly switches over to black again and then and then I have the same kind of range here. So I got the same range there and there. It's the same thing. So here in the middle it's switching be between you know, the least amount of blue and most amount of blue intensity. So <laughs> okay now the green the green is uh, just as it should so that's no problem. Let's have a look at the red. The red seems to change in a linear manner as well. So, okay, now let's compare the maximum intensity levels for uh, RG and B between the two motherboards. I have pulled down uh, most of the colors to um, a minimum here on screen. I've done it on purpose so it will be a little bit easier to um, uh, take a look at the maximum intensity for each color respectively and um, it will probably be a bit easier to compare like this. Uh, I left a little bit of red so I will be able to see what I'm doing on screen. Uh, now let's just turn up red to um, uh, its maximum here. And uh, now I think it looks like the red that is um, coming out from the working motherboard is slightly stronger in intensity. Uh, and now I will um, compare the green um, and I think that the green is pretty strong um, even on the non-working motherboard so and it looks to like it, it seems to be about the same I think so I don't think there's a problem with green and now blue well there's really no point in comparing blue but if we do compare it then I think it's easy to see that the blue that is produced from the, the working board is also a bit stronger in intensity than the blue coming out from the non-working motherboard. Connected through composite instead of RGB, are we getting the same thing on screen? And indeed we do. 
red, it's not that strong. Maximum intensity level here. And uh, green looks pretty much as it ought to. Pretty strong intensity there. And blue, not that strong intensity. And we also got this strange uh, thing going on here in the middle. Like this. Maximum blue there and just a few notches more and bam, down to black. So here and at the maximum here, it's the same intensity level. Alright, so let's take a look at the schematic here and see what we can learn from it. So we've got eight data bits for each color respectively coming out from Lisa. And we got red, green and blue here. And those data bits are going directly into the video DAC or video digital to analog converter. And uh, here we can see that we got some external components for the video deck just to get the reference voltages right. Uh, now I think that the problem we're experiencing with the blue color, uh, you know, in Protractor I was uh, changing the position of the slide bar like this, and right in the middle of that slide bar we got a sudden change in the intensity of the blue color. I think that might have something to do with one of the data bits here for the blue color, but I will look into that later because for now I want to concentrate on the red and blue colors not reaching their maximum intensity. So let's take a look at that. And I think that must have something to do with the analog part of the circuit. So let's take a look at what happens with the red, green and blue analog signals as they are leaving the video DAC. So here we got the red, green, blue analog outputs from the video DAC and they're going to this conjunction here. So let's go down here. Uh, okay, so here we can see that uh, the three uh, signals, RG and B, are AC coupled into the video encoder. And the video encoder is uh, just um, encoding the RGB signals into a composite video signal. And here we can see that we have the output here on pin 20, and it's going through this AC coupling cap here, and it's going through some 75 ohms uh, series resistance there. And finally, it's reaching our RCA jack right here uh, at the back of uh, the Amiga 1200, and we got our uh, composite video signal right there. Now I don't think there's anything wrong at all with the video encoder because I tried to hook up the Amiga motherboard both through composite video and RGB and we got the very same thing on screen and that pretty much tells me that the RGB signals here going into the video encoder is already at fault because the video encoder is just taking the RGB signal uh, signals as it can see them and just you know encodes that into a composite video signal. So obviously if, if there's something wrong with the RGB signals going into the video encoder, then the same thing is going to come out from the video encoder. So that's why we're getting the same thing um, from a composite output as we're getting through RGB output. So there is obviously something wrong with the RGB signal. So let's continue here. And here we can see that uh, we have some, uh, we, we're getting to some diode network here, and this uh, looks like a limiter configuration, a diode limiter configuration, or possibly a diode clamp circuit. But either which, uh, I don't think that this configuration, uh, like this, can affect the signals in a way which would make the colors show up on screen as they are doing. So let's move on here, and here. Um, here we got the RGB signals going out to the 23-pin D sub connector, and now we can see here that we got some um, terminator resistors right down to ground, and we got some series resistors here also for each of the respective lines. Now in the TV, there are terminator resistors as well going down to ground for each of the three RGB lines here, and so. If we pretend that there is a TV here, then we got a 75 ohms resistor for each line here going to ground. So 75, 75, 75 tied right down to ground. And that, together with these three resistor, resistors, creates a voltage divider. And we got our outputs here, here and here. So if these resistors were to be of the wrong values, then that would obviously either attenuate the signal too much or make the amplitude be too high. So I'm going to take a look at these six resistors because I am really suspecting them uh, to be what is causing this problem. So let's take a look at that. Okay, now it would make everything a whole lot easier if I could only find the damn resistors that I'm looking for. Now here's the video DAC, here's the 23-pin uh, D-sub video connector. 
Uh, and I'm looking for uh, re the resistors labeled R231, A, B, and C, and uh, R232, A, B, and C. And I would pretty much uh, expect those resistors to be in this area close to the video connector. Uh, see any resistors with uh, those labels in this area? No. Well, here is uh, 231, but that is E231, not R231, so really not what we are looking for. Now here we can see that uh, there is some sloppy soldering job here on uh, these components. So uh, someone has uh, obviously been playing around here with uh, a soldering iron or something. Uh, kind of sloppy work here, I think. I might have to... Um, uh, resolder some of these components later, but anyway, no resistors here of um, uh, that has uh, those labels. So if I flip the board around here, and uh, here we are again, close to the video connector. So let's see here, R two three one or R two three two A B and C. No. Where are they? You know, I will uh, turn off the camera here and get back to you guys in a few minutes. Okay, back here again a few minutes later. And uh, those resistors were actually a bit tricky to find. They were not in a place where I would expect them to be. So if we move down here a bit, now here is the uh, IDE connector and here is the uh, video encoder. And here in the corner, those little sneaky bastards. They were hiding right there in the corner all along. <laughs> and I mean, who would expect them to be all the way over here when the video DAC is here and the video port is here? <laughs> it's like, yeah. I totally did not expect them to be here. But this is only four of them. We are looking for two more. So let's flip the board over and around the same place let's see here Ta -da! what do we got there R231C R232C alright so I think it's time to uh, measure with the multimeter and also it's of course possible to just read the values right off but I'm gonna just use my multi multimeter Okay, let's see here. There are three resistors labeled R231, uh, A, B, and C, and they should all be around 50 ohms according to the schematic. So here we have R231A, uh, so let's see if we get 50. 25, that's no good. Uh, R232. Those should be around 25, not R231. Anyway, let's check the rest. R231B, I think it says B. So that should be uh, also 50 then. Okay, 50, that's okay. So here's R232B. So all R232s should be around 25. And we get around 25 there, okay. And this one, I don't really know which is uh, which it is because it's not labeled really, or I cannot find uh, any label there. But oh, it's around 50, okay. And there are two more under the board here, so let's check those as well. Now here it's easy to see that this one is uh, R232. To C, and that means uh, 25 expected. Expected 25. <laughs> We're getting 50. Oh man. Okay, and here R231 uh, should be 50. Or wait, 23, yeah, 50. And we are getting 25. Incredible! 
You know what I think? I think, and this is my conclusion, but I think that someone has been uh, playing around with this motherboard quite a bit and uh, I think that that person didn't really have a clue about what he was doing and he desoldered a lot of components and then he forgot where they were seated so when he was about to put them back he put them back in the wrong position incredible I cannot believe this really because these resistors they have swapped places some of them and they cannot do that by themselves someone must have done that and also I think it's easy to see if we take a look at the motherboard here it's easy to see that you know the soldering job is not really that professional uh, I don't know how well you can see that but a lot of components are just solid really sloppy so uh, someone has been playing around a lot here incredible not strange we got these uh, you know intensity maximum intensity color problems so uh, I think it's time to uh, swap those uh, resistors back just a quick overview before I move on with swapping those resistors uh, the uh, values in brackets are the expected ones and uh, the values below here is what we actually got uh, and um, all of these three resistors in series are, uh, are expected to be 24.9 the only one we got that was um, here on the uh, green line and uh, that was the only one that was correct the uh, other ones were around 50 uh, which is of course off and um, uh, the green line, the green color was the only color that showed up correctly on screen when we tested the motherboard before. So that is not strange considering this. Uh, the green has the correct um, resistor in here. And if we go down here and, and, and take a look at the uh, uh, terminator resistor here, that is also correct, just as expected. Uh, but the other two, for uh, uh, red and blue, uh, we got the wrong resistors in there same thing here so it's not strange that we got a um, problem with uh, red and blue but uh, not with green ah I knew it the resistors now I have swapped places of those resistors and uh, yes I have double checked so that they are actually where they should be so uh, now I will turn on the power and uh, Okay, so now we can see the purple background here, so uh, uh, definitely it looks better. Uh, if I start ProTracker here again and uh, do the same test as um, I did before, then let's see what we get here. Uh, okay, so red, yeah, definitely we got the red back, full intensity there. So there is no problem anymore. Full intensity on red. Great. And green, of course, it was already working before, so no problem. Now blue, we can definitely see a better intensity level there. So we got the in intensity back. However, we still got this problem here. This weird problem. It's changing in the middle here. So that's kind of weird. No. A slide bar is going up to the middle and then BAM it switches uh, back again so here and here is the same and uh, around here and here is also the same so uh, I will have to um, take a look at that okay so now when these resistors are back in place right where they should be we could definitely see an improvement in how the colors are showing up on screen so we're making progress here great now it's time to take a look at the other problem which would be the blue color suddenly changing in intensity as we are crossing the midsection of that slide bar in ProTracker and um, I think that um, such a symptom might uh, indicate that there is something wrong with one of these eight databases for the blue color Either it could be a Lisa that is not putting out all the 8 data bits correctly 
or there might be a break in one of the traces on the motherboard uh, or it could be that the video DAC is actually receiving all 8 data bits but there is something wrong with the video DAC so in order to find uh, that out I will uh, take my oscilloscope and probe all the 8 data bits right here where they are going into the video DAC so uh, how can I do that in a convenient way? Well, I could just probe the data bits with my oscilloscope and have a look at the scope and uh, see how that looks like. But there is just one problem with that. Uh, and that is that, um, of course, I want to uh, change the slide bar here. I want to move the slide bar while probing the data bits um, in order to see how the bits are changing between high and low as I am changing uh, changing the position of the slide bar. That's the whole point of it, right? So uh, there's just one problem and that is that there are several uh, colors here in the palette. So if I just choose uh, this one for example, I choose this color to be the color that I'm gonna use as my test color uh, or well, maybe not that, that's a bad example. So let's say this one. Okay, so I move. I can move that to its minimum value and its maximum value. But even if I move that to its mil minimum value, there is still gonna be some other blue on the screen. Like here, we can see we got some blue here. So when the picture is being drawn on screen like this, you know the dry, the lines are being drawn on screen like this. When they are reaching the blue area, then some of the data bits are gonna go high. And I don't want that because it's more difficult to see on the scope what's going on. I only want the data bits to go high when I move the slide bar. I don't want any other portions of the screen affecting my reading on this oscilloscope. So then how can I solve that problem? Well, I have uh, already uh, set up a config here uh, like this. And here the whole screen basically is... Uh, just is, is red. I mean there's no blue on screen now, no green either. I have kept a little bit of red because I have to uh, be able to see what I'm doing on screen. So I could just choose a color here in the palette and uh, play around with that as I'm looking uh, at the scope. But uh, for example if I choose uh, let's say this one you know, then that only changes uh, changes the slide bar to the right here, this uh, kind of vertical going uh, slide bar. So there is no point in that because that's just uh, such a small portion of the screen that that is almost not going to show up on the oscilloscope, or it's gonna show up on the scope, but it's gonna be pretty difficult to see. So basically, I'm gonna choose um, an appropriate color here in the palette. Uh, that affects a big part of the screen. So, for example, I can choose this one or I can choose this one. I think this is a good choice because this is the uh, color in the palette that affects um, the most part of the screen. So, um, you know, let's do that. Let's ch choose this color and change the blue here and uh, have a look at the different data bits as I am changing the blue from its minimum value to its maximum value. Okay, so what we're interested in here is if all the signals coming out from Lisa are reaching the video deck. So here I have my oscilloscope running and, well, actually I don't really need the scope for this. There's another method which I think is even easier and I can show you that in a few minutes. But for now, I will use the scope for demonstration purposes because I think this video is going to be a little bit more interesting for you guys maybe if I uh, use the scope to start with. So uh, let's do that. So here, what we're looking at now is um, the vertical sync pulses here, or the vertical sync signal. We can see the pulses here, here's one pulse, here's one pulse. So uh, between the, the period here, between this pulse and this pulse, uh, we uh, have uh, 20 milliseconds. Uh, the scope is set to 2 milliseconds per division now, so we have the 10 divisions here, and that makes 20 milliseconds. And uh, that is what it takes for uh, the screen to uh, draw one field here. So it starts off like here, and go like this and it draws the raster like this and finally it gets down to here and then it retraces back up here and it takes around 20 milliseconds for it to draw one field here so that is what we're seeing here because we're triggering or actually not triggering now but we're looking at this signal and yeah we're triggering uh, triggered on this signal as well and this is the vertical sync signal so I have uh, my uh, probe connecting to this pin here 
and uh, there is um, there is where we got that signal. So I'm gonna use this signal to uh, to uh, um, trigger. I'm gonna use it as a trigger signal for the digital signals coming into uh, uh, the video deck. Um, so yeah. And by the way, this, these trigger pulses they are kind of short, like. 150 microseconds or so yeah now it's set to 50 microseconds per division so yeah uh, but anyway so okay so I'm gonna set the scope to two uh, two milliseconds per division like that and um, then I'm going to uh, take I'm gonna switch uh, over to the other channel here because I'm just using uh, the second channel as a trigger channel here so I'm gonna switch over to channel one like that and then I'm going to take my other probe here and uh, probe uh, the pins here on the video deck where the blue, eight blue uh, data bits are coming in. Here's the pinout for the ADV 101 and as you know we're interested in the blue color here. And here we have all the data bits for it. So here is blue 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6, 7. So for example this uh, blue 3 here that would be this pin here on the uppermost uh, position there on the right side so up there so I'm just gonna probe all the pins uh, for the blue color all the eight pins and see if we're getting uh, incoming data on all those pins so uh, what can we expect to see on the scope then while probing those eight pins well not much not while the screen is like this anyway because uh, there isn't much blue on the screen so all those eight data bits will be turned off uh, so um, I will have to uh, move the slide bar here a bit to the right and if I move it to the furthermost right position I expect uh, all data bits to uh, be turned on so then I can just probe them all if I want to but I can also move the slide bar back and forth like this while probing the pins on um, the video deck for the blue color and I can see uh, uh, I should be able to see the data bits turn off and on while I'm moving the slide bar like this. Okay, so I will start with B3 here. So uh, let's see what happens when I move the slide bar. Yeah, it's switching there in the middle of the slide bar. And uh, here also you can see that uh, there's more blue here than here and uh, that makes sense also because this is uh, the bottom part of the screen uh, here there's not that much blue here um, and uh, there's more blue here and all the blue up here that's uh, this part and uh, the black part is this part here so this is one update of the screen B2 B1, B0, B4, B5 B6 and B7 So, uh, okay, we now know that all the eight data bits are coming into the video deck, as they should, and uh, that means that there is nothing wrong with Lisa, and uh, probably there is uh, something going on with this video deck, so I guess I will have to replace it. But um, what exactly is wrong with it? Which one of those eight pins is the one that is not working? I am curious about that, and... Well, I want to find out. I am a person who really wants to 
find out what went wrong before I move on here. I cannot really sleep well at night if I don't find out exactly which pin is not working. I'm sorry, I'm just that kind of person. So, I'm gonna try to uh, do that. So, uh, um, okay, so, you know, when we did that thing in ProTracker and checked on the, the, the signals on the oscilloscope and all that stuff, uh, if this is the slide bar in ProTracker, okay, it starts here and stops here, you know, left, right, and the middle is here, around here. So, you know, some of those eight data bits, some of them, they went like off, on, off, on, off, on, or something like that. But, you know, when we look at the screen in ProTracker, uh, the problem is in the middle of the slide bar, right? Because we move that slide bar, and in the middle of that slide bar, then bam, the color switches to uh, back to black again. Okay, so uh, then uh, when we were looking on the scope, then uh, what signals were only switching in the middle, right, where we have that problem? I could see two of those data bits that um, uh, were switching only in the middle here and not here and not here. They were only switching in the middle and not at another place um, during that course of the slide bar. Could you see that? Um, could you see which two uh, data bits uh, those were? Well, if you didn't notice, then maybe you can rewind the video a little bit and have a look again. Uh, but for now, we will get back to that soon. But um, for now, I will show you the other way I mentioned. You know, I mentioned another way that I thought was easier, another method of uh, troubleshooting this. So uh, I will show you that method. So here I have a Logic Probe, a really convenient little piece of test equipment. Let's hook it up. And it's really quick and easy to hook this thing up and get started. That's what I like about it. You know, basically we only got power and then we set to go. Black alligator clip goes to ground and red one goes to 5 volts. Uh, well, actually, I think this can be powered up to 18 volts, but um, uh, for now we're going to power it with 5 volts because we're going to measure TTL compatible signals. So, let's go. In a situation like this, I actually think it's more convenient to uh, just use a logic probe rather than an oscilloscope because it's uh, quite quick to hook up the logic probe and uh, besides, we don't really need to look at the signals. We're not that interested in uh, the duration of the pulses and all that stuff. What we just want to know here basically is whether or not the data bits for the blue color uh, are coming in to uh, the video deck and we can very much use a logic probe to find that out. So uh, if I probe one of the pins here, so this would be uh, the blue 3, the pin for blue 3, B3. And okay, we can see here that we have a low level there. It's uh, indicating that. Now if I move the slide bar here in ProTracker, as we cross the midsection, it's uh, switching. So here, the data bit is active. And here it's inactive. So uh, let me probe the next one here. So this would be uh, blue 2, B2, right there. Okay, so that is switching a few times more along uh, uh, the course of the slide bar. The next one, blue uh, 1, I guess this would be, B1. And that is switching even more. Yeah, that is switching even more often than uh, the previous pins. But anyway, uh, you get the idea here, so I don't have to do all the pins. So uh, which two pins was it that uh, switches only in the middle of that slide bar? Well, first this one, B3. It only switches one time in the middle there of the slide bar, right where we got that problem with the color, okay, the intensity level of the blue color. And the other pin was blue 7, 
B7 right here. Okay, it's doing the same thing, switching only in the middle there. I mean, in comparison to, to like, let's say, uh, blue uh, zero here. You know, that is switching really a lot here along the course of that slide bar. So, really, um, blue three, B3 here, and B7. One of those pins. So it has come down to two pins now. We have already eliminated the other ones. But which one of those two pins uh, is the one that is causing this problem? Is it either B3 or B7? Well, we cannot really use the logic probe to uh, find that out because the data bits on B3 and B7 are both behaving the same. So the logic probe is really no good to us anymore. So, in order to find this out, I will have to dig out another weapon here. And my weapon of choice for now will be the Logic Pulsar. Now, a Logic Pulsar, what it does is to inject pulses into a digital circuit. So, I will use it to inject pulses into this video deck, and of course, especially into B3 and B7, because those two pins are the ones we are interested in. And while injecting pulses into those two pins, we can then see uh, whether or not we're getting a response from the video deck just by observing the screen while doing so. But um, I cannot just uh, inject pulses at random. You know, here, uh, this uh, logic pulser, we have a setting here on it, uh, a little switch. We can uh, set it to either 400 pulses per second or 0.5 pulses per second. But when having it set to uh, uh, either reach here, 400 or 0.5, it's just gonna send a lot of random pulses. So um, if we inject those pulses into the video deck, that's gonna be asynchronous with the video deck and uh, asynchronous with the display being uh, drawn on the screen, on the TV. Um, so if you imagine this being the TV screen, as you probably know, the rest is being drawn line by line like this. Now, if we were to inject pulses into the video deck, just at random, what would we get on the display? Well, the Logic Pulsar is uh, sending out pulses with a duration of 10 microseconds. And um, that is not that long. So, uh, what would happen then is that the raster is being drawn like that. And then, okay, here at random, uh, pulse is starting. Okay, so 10 microseconds, maybe it stops here. Okay, then it continues to... Uh, draw the raster, the TV continues to draw the raster. Okay, so maybe here the next pulse will start. Okay, we have a pulse here and then maybe it will continue a bit in here and then it stops here and then a pulse here and a pulse here and here and here and here and the TV retraces and it does it again and maybe here, here, again we will have, have random pulses here, 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 here. Okay, it's gonna just be a lot of flickering on the screen. It's not gonna be that useful. We will not be able to see much. So what we wanna do here is to synchronize the raster and how it's being drawn on the TV, on the display. We want to synchronize that with the logic pulser. So how do we do that? Well, uh, the logic pulser here, it has this external sync input and uh, that's really useful. We can use that because if we use the horizontal sync pulses here, we have that signal here, this horizontal sync signal. Here's the vertical sync signal. We have a horizontal sync signal there okay so then uh, one line is being drawn like this and then bam a sync pulse okay it goes here uh, to the next line and then a line is being drawn a sync pulse okay so then these sync pulses they will trigger the logic pulser so uh, let's say we have a sync pulse here it goes here the logic pulser will pulse uh, for uh, 10 send a pulse for 10 microseconds and maybe that pulse will stop here okay goes like this and BAM! Sync pulse. The logic pulser will again send a pulse for 10 microseconds. Maybe it stops here and it continues like that on every line. Sync, pu uh, sync pulse here and uh, inject pulse here and next line inject, 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 inject and the result will be a vertical bar going across the screen like this. And um, we will be able to see that bar as we activate that particular data bit on whatever 
uh, pin we choose to uh, inject pulses on. So yeah, let's try that out. Here I have the logic pulse hooked up. Actually, this is not only a logic pulse, it's also a logic probe. So it's a logic probe and pulse in one. But the probe part of it is quite useless, if you ask me. It's only got these two LEDs, and that's it. That's the probe. It hasn't got any speaker or memory function at all. So I never use it as a logic probe, I just use it as a pulser. And this tip here is uh, for uh, the logic probe. If we want to use the pulser part, we have to access these three points here. And here at this point, we have our uh, pulse signal coming out that we are going to inject into the video deck using this probe. And here we have a square wave coming out. We're not that interested in that now. And here is the external sync input. And I have that connected to this point here, right at the 23 pin D sub connector. So here we have our horizontal sync signal and that is going into the external sync here of the logic pulser. Okay, so I'm going to start injecting pulses into the video deck now using this probe that is going to uh, the logic pulser. And I'm going to start with a color that we know is working because uh, then we can get a good reference and we know what to expect when uh, doing the same thing with the pins for the blue color. So uh, let's start with green, for example, because you know green is a good color. It's kind of bright. It's a bit brighter than red, I think. So let's uh, try green 7, for example. So I'm going to put this probe to green 7 and we will see what happens on the screen. Aha! Uh -huh. See? It's like I said, we're getting a vertical bar across the screen there. Now let's go down to uh, green 6. That was green 7. Let's go to green 6. And we can see that uh, this vertical bar is uh, becoming less intensified. So we're going down in um, the values here of the data bits. We're going to the less significant values. So if uh, we go down all the way to green 1 or even green 0, which would be the least significant value, then it would be pretty much impossible to see or almost impossible to see. We would have to tweak the settings on the TV a lot in order to even be able to catch that. And maybe even then it would be really difficult. Um, so let's not do that. But, um, okay, so we can continue with the red here. You know, it's the same thing. I thought I would just show you quickly here what happens if I disconnect the horizontal sync signal going into the logic pulser. So here I have it disconnected as you can see. And I will now again take my probe and inject pulses into pin green 7 of the video deck. So here we go. And now we just have this flickering going on there on the screen. And now I will again reconnect uh, the horizontal sync signal to the external sync input of the logic pulser. And there we go. Okay, and now we have this vertical bar going again across the screen there. Okay, now let's have a look at the blue color here. That's the one we're really interested in. So uh, let's start with uh, one pin that we know should be working, like B6 for example. We have that here. And yeah, we're getting a vertical bar there uh, across the screen. Let's uh, see here, B5, okay. That was B6 here. Let's uh, check uh, B5. There we have B5 and B4. Uh, yeah, it's getting kind of uh, difficult to see, but there we have it. Uh, okay, let's uh, check uh, B3. This is going to be kind of difficult to see, so yeah. We will have to stay focused here, but okay, B3, here we go. Can you see it? <laughs> I can actually see it. It's uh, kind of difficult, but yeah, I can see some kind of weak uh, blue color there around track 1 there in the ProTracker. And now I remove it. It's kind of tricky to <laughs> see that. It's not that easy, but I can actually catch it. There we have it, and now I remove it, and I put the probe back. Can you see it? 
Yeah, it's there. It's definitely there. So that pin is working. And now I removed it. Yeah, that was a bit tricky to uh, catch. Not easy to to see, but um, yeah, I could actually see that. Uh, so okay, it's not B three. Then how about B seven? We have B seven here. This is the other one we suspect. And well, we're getting nothing. Again, B six, B five. And this is less intensified. B5 is less intensified than B6 here. So B7 should be even more intensified. But it's not. There's nothing there. Uh, and if I probe green 7, uh, you know, that's the most intensified green data bit. So it's the same for uh, all colors. So blue 7, I should uh, get a really intensified blue bar going across the screen, but nope, nothing. Okay, now not only do we know that there's something wrong with the video deck, but we also know what is wrong with it. It's this pin here, blue 7, or B7 in the pinout, right there. That is not working as it should. So, now when I know what's wrong with this video deck, I guess I can sleep better at night. Now if I do a search on eBay for ADV 101, I cannot really find this video deck. I just find a lot of other junk that has nothing to do with that. On another Amiga 1200 motherboard I have here, I can find a slightly different model of the video deck. So this is the VP1013BA. So I'm gonna try searching for that one instead. VP1013BA. And here we have it. Now of course I don't want the dual inline package, I want the PLCC package. So I'm gonna click here. Okay, around 5 US bucks. But before I order this one, I will have to see if it's pin compatible with the other one. So let's take a look at that. And yep, they seem to be completely pin compatible. So I will order that VP101 3BA. Three pieces of VP101 3BA has arrived all the way from China. This is an anti-static mat, so I will just put it here for the time being. Now it's time to do some surgery here. This patient will have to get a DAG transplant, but before that I will have to remove some other organs like this capacitor for example. But after that I should be able to get this DAC out quite easily and also get another DAC in there without any major problems. So, now we have the new video deck in place there, and these two capacitors are also new. You know, I had to remove the other ones anyway, so I thought I might just as well put new ones in there while I'm at it. 
And besides, I don't really like reusing old capacitors, so I put new ones in there. Now, the other video deck that was in here, uh, it had a jumper wire going between uh, this pin here and these two uh, ground pins right here. It was uh, this one. But I'm not really sure if it's um, actually needed on this uh, video deck because this is another model, it's the VP101 3BA. Um, but, well, then again, I do expect both these two uh, video decks to work in basically the same way. So, yeah, I guess I do need that jumper wire, but um, I thought we could try it out first without it and see what happens. So, let's power up the system and see uh, what kind of picture we get on screen. Okay, here we go. And it seems like we're just getting a white screen. That kind of sucks. Uh, let's see if this. Okay, we can hear the floppy drive loading there, so uh, it's still booting up and everything, so no problem. Okay, I guess I just need that jumper wire, so I'm gonna put it back in there. Okay, now let's try it out one more time. There we go, now we're getting a picture again. So let's put a disk in the drive and boot a Pro Tracker once again. Okay, we're getting a grey screen here, so everything looks normal. Now, let's see. And we have red here, and green. So, red and green, they are working fine, we already know that. Now, let's uh, take a look at blue. Okay, I'm gonna cross the midsection of that slide bar. Is it gonna work? And Ta-da! Will you look at that? Beautiful! Alright, I guess that's it. Thanks for stopping by and I will see you guys again soon.